What is up guys, Troy at the Full Setup, back with another unboxing video for you today. I've got a new graphics card. Now I returned my old 2060, well I'd say old, I've only had it a couple of weeks. I returned my um, Paylit Gaming Pro OC. Um, I really just bought that because it was the card that I sort of could get on launch day that had a DVI on it, but I just never really wanted it. And I bought this actually with my Amazon affiliate money from my Amazon.com, so all, everyone that's been watching in the US you paid for me to get this card and I'm really grateful for that. So I've obviously got a refund and still got a 2060. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving away one of my deep cool 240 liquid coolers in the next couple of videos. So make sure you subscribe and come over to that. I just want to say thank you. So I'm going to give away a liquid cooler. Talking of liquid as well, I'd stated in previous videos that I uh, spilt this entire glass of water right in the center of my mixer. I literally took the mixer apart instantly, put it next to a radiator three days and every single input and dial works on it perfectly as well. So I'm really happy. But anyway, we need to do the unboxing. So what I've got is the Asus Dual RTX 2060. This is the advanced edition. Um, so a bit of confusion, the overclock versions are the faster versions. The advanced edition are actually standard, which I think is a bit weird. I don't know. To me, advanced sounds like a little bit more than overclock. But as you can see, we've got 6 gigabytes of GDDR6. We know this has got 920 CUDA cores as well, just like every other 2060. Support for ray tracing, DirectX 12 and Anzel. I've already done loads of 2060 benchmarks as well with the Ryzen 2600. So make sure you go and check those out. But for these ones, we're going to be doing the Intel i5-8400 ones as well. Probably do some comparisons, but I'm probably only going to compare overclocked results because obviously this card is slightly downclocked. So my other one boosting up to 1830 megahertz. This one only boosts up to 723 megahertz. Let's have a little look at the back of the box there. This is an expensive graphics card. This is about over 400 pounds in the UK you are going to pay the Asus tax, you know, but obviously you guys help me out with that and I really do appreciate it as well. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm sort of like being like, yeah, I've got free stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, I work hard to make a lot of these videos. So it's nice to be able to get something back from all of you and I will give something back for it. So yeah, it's got a base clock of 1395 megahertz. The actual boost says 1725, but we're going to plug it in in a PC in a minute and I'm going to show you it's out of the box boost because the boost will be much higher than that um, but yeah the unboxing experience looks very good maybe this is what the Asus tax is going on a fancy cardboard box yeah this was the cooler for me the Strix was almost the same price and I feel like I might regret not buying the Strix, but the Strix didn't have a DVI port. So my 144 hertz monitor, I didn't mention that in my last video, only runs with a DVI port. So it's getting to the point now where my monitor's starting to dictate to me what graphics card I should buy, and I'm not gonna do that. I will replace that at a later date. So I am probably gonna regret not buying the Strix. Now there is packaging steps here of how you're supposed to do it, but honestly, I'm really confused here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull this off, you know. Screw it. I do not have a clue how they put this thing in here. There we go. Any accessories included in here? No, no, no. Oh, very nice. Now this is a big graphics card. A big chunky graphics card. So I'm gonna pull all of this plastic stuff off of it and then we're gonna have a closer look at it. So here is the graphics card then, and I must say it was much easier to get the plastic off versus the um palette version I had. Now there was a little plastic protector on the PCI 3.0 and there's sort of plastic protectors as well on all the monitor outputs. Let's just start off with measuring it because although this isn't the longest RTX 2060 you're going to get, there are triple fans available. It's coming in at about 28 centimeters. This is a fat graphics card. This is a 2.7 slot. Here you can see we've got the 8 pin power connector. They recommend a 500 watt power supply. Look, you can run this probably off a 400 watt unit. I just always recommend buying a 500 to 600 watt power supply anyway. Um, you know, when you're doing a build, just you, just so you've got it. Got the Asus logo on there, GeForce RTX, no RGB. You know, maybe I am gonna miss the RGB from the Strix version, but this is definitely what I like. You, all the people that know me know that I love doing my white and black PC builds. So we've got what looks to be two 90 millimeter fans here as well. There's a bit of plastic on there, I'll peel it off later. Just the, the whole shroud looks really nice. So you can just see, this heatsink 
is massive. Now I think they're they're probably six mil, four six mil copper hype heat pipes, but they're almost looking almost close to eight mil to me. The back plate also looks fantastic. That was one thing, you know, when we looked at the payload card, we were like, God, doesn't it look basic? Although it was a very highly clocked card and a faster clock card than this, it did look very basic indeed, but I'm loving this white and black black plate. This whole thing just looks absolutely fantastic. All black PCB as well. And then we have an all black IO cover and we have two HDMI 2.0 Bs two DisplayPort 1.4s and we have my DVI-D port as well. Maximum output on this is 8K, but I'm gonna mostly be using it at 1080p 144. So yeah, there is the graphics card. So I'm gonna pop this in the 8400 build and we're gonna have a look at its out of the box boost clock. So I have everything plugged into my system. We're using my i5 8400 build at the moment. This is in a deep cool um, barren case, lots of RGB in it, RGB RAM as well. Everything is looking very nice indeed. Now I've got it set up on my ultra wide monitor over here. And as you can see, out of the clock boost, so wrong mouse, it's sitting around about 1860, 1875 megahertz, and we're at 61 degrees. But one thing good to notice is that fans are running at 37%. If you set the, just the standard fan curve, so this is the uh, standard fan curve that is built into MSI after burner, it will, drop the temps down a little bit you'll start to see the temps go down obviously we're not going to see it here it takes a few minutes but yeah for the most i'm seeing this boost at around 1875 when it's a bit cooler if you're running the fans a bit faster or if you max out the power limit it sort of sits around the 1900 to 925 megahertz so that's sort of what you get out of it now g-sync is set up fine here we go we've got enable g-sync you can see my g-sync panel in here everything is enabled so that's fine we're running g-sync on a free sync monitor Next thing I wanted to talk about was overclocking. Um, I have been using this for the last few days. And when it comes to overclocks, let's have a look at my overclock profile here. And we're just gonna turn the fans down a little bit as well. So as you can see here, when overclocked, we're running at about 1980 megahertz. Um, I have found in games though, it's actually boosting more to about 2020 megahertz, 2025 as well. So again, it's just dependent on temperature. If you do max out the fans, this will get a lot cooler pretty quiet as well about 80 percent is where i find it to be quite audible now as for the overclock um, i've added 100 megahertz to the core and a thousand megahertz to the memory now i was able to push this up to plus 125 megahertz and i would have said it worked on 50 60 percent of my games but because it doesn't work on all of my games we're going for 100 megahertz overclock in all my benchmarks as well so that's it for me today just a quick unboxing of the asus geforce rtx 2060 dual this is the advanced edition little look at the stock boost clocks and looked at the overclock performance as well and how to set up g-sync for you i'm going to post a link to all the benchmarks i do with this card um in the description to this video but please make sure you go to the channel and check out all the rtx 2060 videos we've already done Anyway, that's it from me today. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike. And I'll be back with some more content very soon.